What's going on my e-bike friends? Thank you for clicking on this video and I have an all new e-bike to show you today. It's called the ZM bike and it's from G-Force. Now, first things first, this bike is here courtesy of G-Force. I did not purchase the bike. They sent it to me so I could ride and test and put my user experience out there on YouTube for all of you to use. Maybe give you some useful insight if you're considering the ZM bike. So we're gonna go through it today. I'm gonna show you the bike front to back, top to bottom, give you some close-ups so you can really see what this bike looks like. I know it's hard to tell from the pictures online, but I'll show you everything up close also show you some performance footage of top speeds and hill climbs and all that stuff. And then uh, at the end, we'll kind of wrap it up and I'll tell you what it might be important to know if you're considering buying this bike. So let's get going. All right, so let's start taking a look at the ZM bike from G-Force. Now, the first thing I'll say is the bike comes in two different options and really that's just with regard to the battery pack. So your battery pack is right here. It's kind of like a fake gas tank up there. And uh, version one is, you know, you get a 13.5 amp hour battery pack or this version, which is a 20 amp hour battery pack. So a pretty big battery pack on this. When I checked the website this morning, the prices were for this model at the 20 amp hour was $25.99. And if you want one with a 13 amp hour battery pack, it's $22.99. So there's no different frame designs or colors or anything like that. It's just your choice of the battery size. As far as the arrival and setup of the ZM bike, very straightforward, same as most electric bikes that are shipped to your door. You just have to put on the front wheel and the headlight charge up the battery and you're pretty much done. The bike was packaged very well, arrived undamaged, lots of foam in there to protect the bike, comes with a tool kit, nice little tool kit, and of course the battery charger. When you order the 20 amp hour battery pack, they give you a three amp fast charger. If you order the 13 amp hour version of the battery, they give you a two amp charger. Now let's start giving you some close up looks at everything. We'll start with the tires. So there are 20 by four inch fat tires on this bike, love the fat tire look. They are CST is the brand. And I think more interesting is that they are wrapped around these cool looking mag wheels. I love the mag wheels. It always makes them look more motorcyclish and less bicycle. So I'm, I'm digging the mag wheels on this bike. So the ZM bike has a more substantial axle that goes through here. It's not just a quick release lever on there. You do have a through axle going through the front wheel. The brakes are 160 millimeter disc on there, which is, odd usually the e-bikes have 180s on there so a little bit smaller of a disc on here and i love the red calipers that really pops on the wheel both front and back they're both red i like that look a lot the brand of the brakes i'm going to say wrong one i've never heard of this brand but they're they're hydraulic brakes full hydraulic brakes and they're awesome they were fantastic i i i love the brakes on it they worked excellent I, I, one of the strongest points of the bike honestly you can skid both tires <laughs> there was a time where i pulled the front brake so hard i skidded the front tire so the brakes were amazing on the bike now it does have a front suspension fork i did not see any branding on the fork at all i'm not sure what brand the fork is and it does have adjustment knobs here on the top so you can make some you know little adjustments to your front suspension and it's also got this more motorcyclish look to it right it has the i think what it's called is like a double shoulder where the the forks come all the way up to the handlebars and to me, I love that look. I, I tried putting this aftermarket on one of my other bikes because I like the look so much. The only thing I'll say about it that you need to know is it does kind of affect your turning radius a little bit. Because when you turn the handlebars all the way, you can see it, it eventually touches the frame. But it's got these rubber mounts right here that you can adjust and keep it from scratching up your paint or scratching the forks. But it does limit your turning radius just a little bit. I really only notice it if you're on like a really tight trail and you wanna do a complete 180, or if you're inside your shed or something trying to move this thing around, you got that limited radius, but not a big deal. I'll take that uh, for the look any day of the week. I love the look. The bike comes with fenders, both front and back, and they wrap around a little bit, but they don't look excessively huge on the bike. I'm not a big fan of the huge fenders on there. Uh, these ones they look nice what breaks it up is you've got this gloss racing stripe that runs down the center of it so it's not just a plain flat black plastic look they look pretty snazzy on there actually all right let's talk about lighting package standout feature on this bike i'm gonna say this headlight is fantastic awesome <laughs> i love the headlight it is it looks great it's led it is crazy crazy bright i hope they sell these aftermarket on their website because i might pick up a few for my other bikes um, it's a big light on there but it is it's really really bright actually let me turn it on all right there you go i know it's probably hard to get a, 
a feel for it in the daylight on camera, but I'll put up some nighttime shots too. This is crazy bright headlight and the taillight looks really nice as well. I love the lighting package on the bike. Yeah, that taillight looks really good. All LED. There's only one thing I guess I would complain a little bit about and that's that there's no brake light. When you pull the brake lever, you don't get brake light. So, you know, at this price point, you're over 2000 bucks. I kind of think if you're gonna put a, such a great lighting package on the bike, add in that brake light feature. I'd almost rather have a brake light than a taillight, just so people know when I'm stopping. But let's swing back up to the front. I always like to point this out, and that is the wiring and how, how good or bad they are at tying everything up. And this is very clean. They've just got this fabric with a zipper on it that holds everything in place. And it's even zip tied up here nicely. I mean, it's just pretty good wire management on this bike, and you really don't see it anywhere else on the bike from this side. If you come around to the other side, you can see it come out the bottom right here and go back to your, um, your motor and uh, brake caliper and everything there. But it, it blends in, you don't really see it because it's black on black, but very good wire management on the bike, I think. Now we can take a look at handlebars. So we've got round rubber grips and they were locked in place, man. They don't move at all. I really like that. I like the round rubber grips. Twist throttle, excellent. Big fan of twist throttle. Right here's your horn button. It's an ear piercing horn. <laughs> I think I might add a bell because here, listen. Very loud horn. I guess it would be good on the street though. You really get people's attention. Seven speed mechanical gears on the bike. Display screen, of course you get your battery indicator up top. Uh, your speed, real big, right in the middle. Odometer, trip meter. It'll even show you, if I hit the button, it'll show you battery voltage too. That's always nice to have. And then it'll toggle through your ride time, max speed, average speed, all that. And over here is your pedal assist. It goes one through five. Five different levels of pedal assist on the bike. And also at the bottom of the display, you do have a USB charging port under there. So you can charge something up here in the cockpit if you need to. And on this side, all that's over here is just your uh, pedal assist buttons and menu buttons, power buttons, all that stuff over here. Headlight, you just hold the plus sign for three seconds or so. That's what turns the lighting package on. I really didn't do a whole lot of programming on the screen, I, the only thing I really changed was the top speed setting, and you just hold the plus and minus for a couple seconds. It'll take you to the menu, and it's all the P settings. If you toggle up to P8, you can see I set it to 50. Um, it came set at like 30, which is, this is kilometers an hour, so it came regulated to 18, 19, 20, somewhere in there, miles per hour, and by bumping that up, I moved it up where I can go 30 plus miles per hour on this bike now. So you can change that speed setting, but I guess do so at your own risk. It will come shipped to you as a, you know, legal pedal assist e-bike. Now for the ride position the bike has you in, I found it to be pretty comfortable, actually. The handlebars have a little bit of a bend, so they come up to you and they're, they're pretty tall. You could even make them taller with a stem riser if you wanted, but I really think they're adequate the way they are. I was quite comfortable on the bike. I'm six feet tall. Uh, even pedaling the bike was okay. These moped style bikes are not meant for a tall person to pedal a lot really. And I find myself when I'm riding, I'm not really pedaling that much anyway, but you can pedal it if you had to. My wife who is five foot three, also rode the bike up and down the street a couple times. She remarked that she wished it was just a little bit shorter. Uh, she's got short legs at five three. The seat height on this is 33 inches off the ground. So as long as you can handle that 33 inch seat height, that's from ground to top of seat, uh, you'll be okay. She, I'm sure, would have a much easier time pedaling with her shorter legs on this bike. But even at six feet tall, I didn't find myself wanting to rush out and make any changes to make the ride positioning more upright or anything like that. It was pretty comfy. All right, now let's talk about this frame. Very interesting, unique frame design. I like it a lot. I think it's a really sharp looking frame design. Uh, but it is very, very heavy duty. I mean, this is a big frame. This, even this right here, this isn't plastic. This is, that's aluminum. That's part of the metal frame. And it's just big everywhere. The head tube, this metal piece here, you got these little gussets and this big, huge plate welded on there, all the suspension parts and all this adds up. All this is weight that adds up. And this is a heavy bike. This bike weighs 92 and a half pounds, at least on my scale, 92.5 pounds. It's a heavy bike, but that really only comes into play if you're trying to lift it. Riding it around, you don't really notice the weight at all. It's not like you come to a stoplight and it wants to fall over because it's so heavy. You don't notice the weight riding around. It's only when you're gonna to try to put this in the back of your truck or carry it up a flight of stairs or put it on a bike rack or something, then you're gonna feel the weight. And it's, I was trying to think of the best way to describe this. Riding it around, 
that weight gives it a, I don't know, road presence. <laughs> it just feels substantial and it feels planted on the ground. If you've ever ridden like a 250 motorcycle on the highway and you know how the wind just blows you all over the lane, right? And then you jump on a 600 pound cruiser bike and it's much, much more stable at that highway speed. That's kind of how this was. It always felt very planted and stable. Now I'm thinking that could be because of the heavy weight of the bike, but it's very cool frame design. I really like the color scheme, the red, white, little pinches of blue in there, that's fine. The graphics, there's a couple I'm just unsure of. I'm not a huge fan of the checkered flag. I like the GeForce logo. I, like, I wish this was just bigger up here. And then some of the other, like this just says strong momentum right here. And over here it says silver aluminum. So I'm not quite sure why they picked those phrases for the bike, but they're pretty small. You don't really see them on there, honestly. Overall, I mean, this is, this is just a sticker. You could peel that off if you wanted to. The rest of them are baked into the paint though. There's no removing the other ones, but I really do like the color scheme. Even the wheels have just these silver accents on them. So they, they really pop going down the road. It's a, it's a cool looking bike going down the road. All right, let's get to this battery. It's a very cool battery design. I'll put up a uh, clip of me taking this battery in and out, but it was very, very easy to remove, to take in and out. I like this battery design a lot. And you can see you've got a power button on the battery. You gotta turn the battery on before you can turn the bike on. There is a USB power port there, but I believe they're gonna be eliminating that one. They didn't see a need for two on the bike. You've got one on the display already. And then this is your uh, key unlock right there. And it, it's really simple to use. It kind of slides in from the side, but great that it's removable. You can take it in your house to charge. That's another, I think, more of a standout feature of this bike. This is the 20 amp hour battery pack. The 13, it looks the same size. It just has different amount of cells inside it probably. And yeah, I, I was happy with the battery. I've not done a range test on the bike yet. I'll probably put that video out next on the ZM bike. So click subscribe so you can see that. And there was one other thing I wanted to show you about the frame. I've seen this on a couple different bikes now where you get it and it's got this big, huge part right here where it looks like it should almost be a mid drive in this bike, but it's not. And I was curious. So of course, me being citizen, I opened this. <laughs> I opened it to look inside. This is just a plastic cover on there. And there's just little screws here. I popped it off to see what was inside. The controller is inside there. It's crammed in there. I had to weasel it out. I just want to see you know, what it was and how big. It's a 22 amp controller inside there. That's where it is if you ever need to get to it. Um, it was pretty easy to take it in and out, honestly. So with a 48 volt battery, 22 amp controller should be 1000 watt, 1000 watt plus, somewhere in that neighborhood for your peak output. And while we're on the topic of the frame, I do want to point out that there's no rear rack on the bike, no real mounting point for that. Uh, there's no mounting points for a front rack either. So you're left with, you know, you got your battery right here, so you can't put a top two bag on there. You're really kind of left with this area right here to do any kind of cargo carrying, I guess. I mean, you've got some, looks like bottle, bracket, screws right there. You might be able to find some kind of triangle bag that fits in here. So you can have some carrying capacity on this bike. Uh, the payload capacity, I should say, it's 400 pounds, if you're curious on that. So you can be a pretty heavy rider and still ride this, but carrying something with you might be a little tough. You'd have to come up with your own plan of how exactly you would add a bag to this bike if you need to carry things with you. Maybe you could put a bag here that just hangs over the front of the handlebars. But I know a lot of folks carry things with them, so I want to point that out. There's no real setup on this bike for, you know, a bag or a rack system. For the gearing on the bike up front, you got a 48 tooth chainring, has a double sided plastic guard on it. And in the back, you've got a 14 28 tooth. So what does that mean? Well, that means it's fine around town. No, no problem around town. Gearing was just fine. If you get up to speeds 25 plus miles an hour, you're kind of ghost pedaling at that point, or you're just pedaling frantically to keep up. But around town, that gearing was just fine. It's only really at the higher speeds that you notice it and you just kind of run out of pedal. The seat on the ZM bike, I think looks great. It's uh, 33 inches from ground to the top of the seat. It's nice and long, it's 22 inches long. It's passenger ready, plenty of space there to carry someone on the back with you. The only thing missing, I think, is uh, they did not add any passenger foot pegs. So if you put someone on the back, their legs are just gonna kind of dangle down. It'd be cool if they could add just some pegs right here for them to rest their feet on. And I would say it's comfortable for the first half of your ride after, after a while riding. 
it gets a little stiff it's a little a little bit hard but thankfully you've got the rear suspension here to soak up some of the bumps and you've got a lot of suspension components going on here adding more to the weight of the bike and it's the shocks tucked in behind this this plate at least they give you an access point here where you can get the bolt out and take the shock out and change it if you wanted there's no adjustment in the shock i felt it was fine for me i weigh about 175 pounds and i could feel it working i mean when you get on this bike and just go blast through a wide open field it soaks up the bumps nice you really notice the difference when you have a bike with rear suspension versus one without it and this had no problem soaking up those bumps it was fine for me it's pretty hard to make a one size fits all shock if you're at the you know low extreme low or extreme high of the weight spectrum maybe this shock isn't going to work for you it was fine for me at 175 and it might be a little bit tough changing this one out given how it's just tucked behind there's no access on the other side either it's in between these metal plates so be a little challenging to get to but i'm sure you can they got it in there so i'm sure you could get it out and change it if you really wanted and in the rear wheel is your 750 watt hub motor with the 22 amp controller that this has got you're probably looking at a, a peak output of thousand a little over a thousand watts all right now let's talk about some performance numbers i took this bike out and ran it up to top speed using the throttle only no pedaling and it went right up to 28 miles an hour 27 28 it was cruising along just fine when i threw in pedaling of course i had to pedal it crazy to keep up and get some force into the pedals but i was able to crack it up over 30 when i added in pedaling so it's got some really good top end speed it doesn't have crazy fast acceleration off the line but once it gets going and gets up to speed and gets rolling it's got a pretty good top end on it for the hill climb test i start these bikes on the hill they start pointing uphill on the incline so it gives you a really good feeling for does this bike have the juice to get itself off the line and up this hill and it went right up the hill throttle only no problem it wasn't the fastest bike up the hill it wasn't the slowest the fastest ones go up about 22 seconds this one did in about 26 some of the slower ones have been 30 plus so it was kind of right there in the middle of the pack decent hill climb power i don't live in a very hilly area in north carolina so i don't really have any crazy steep hills to test this on i don't know that anyone's going to buy this style of bike to do mountainous hill climbs you're probably going to buy a mountain bike style for that so i wasn't um you know i wasn't mad at the hill climb power on this bike just like any e-bike really as long as you I'm, I'm doing these throttle only i'm asking the bike to do everything if you drop the gears down to two or three and pedal it yeah you're gonna have no no problem going up probably any hill that you need to tackle so i was pleased with the hill climb power in the zm it did just fine all right so that was a lot of info on the zm bike but now let me just try to wrap it up a little bit and tell you what i think you might need to know if you're considering buying this bike from g-force the first thing i'll say is it's heavy it's over 90 pounds it's 92 and a half pounds on my scale so take that into consideration if you're going to be lifting the bike a lot it's a heavy bike to be lifting every day you don't really feel it when you're riding it but you're going to definitely feel it when you're lifting it the second thing to consider is it's a 33 inch seat height and that is non-adjustable you can't adjust this seat any so think about your stature and if that's going to fit you the next thing to point out is there's no racks on the bike and no real cargo areas you've got this area right here to work with maybe you could find a bag that fits in there but if you're looking for a bike because you want to carry a bunch of stuff with you it's going to be a challenge for the zm bike all right other things to know the brakes the brakes were phenomenal <laughs> i've never heard of that brand of brakes and i've tried a bunch i've tried multiple styles of textro tektro brakes zoom brakes star union gemma a bunch i can't even remember but these were really good I, i've never heard of that brand wrong one but i hope they keep using them because the brakes were phenomenal on this bike power let's talk about power what's the power like on the zm bike it's really toward the high end it's got good top speed power not a lot of acceleration off the line power it gets up going just fine but it really shines at the high speeds and you don't feel the motor kick out really uh, normally I, I actually hear and feel the motor stop at 28 miles an hour on most bikes this one it did not it just kept going and going and going if you ran this downhill I think I had it almost 32 miles an hour when I was going downhill and you could still hear the motor running I think it was just limited by it just couldn't physically spin any faster <laughs> i think that was the the only limiting factor to it it didn't seem to cut out at all so it's got really good top end speed to it and the last thing i'll bring up is pedaling so it's a moped style bike you're not really going to be pedaling it all that much i don't think at six feet tall i was able to pedal the bike 
you feel a little bit cramped you can still pedal but it's not really i guess designed for that most people that buy this are going to be riding it around like a little miniature motorcycle which is kind of how i ride it so if you're looking for a bike for specifically pedaling to get exercise hmm, maybe not maybe not this style for you but uh, i mean it was just fine you can you can still turn the pedals and get a little bit of a workout if you want but it's just really not built for that i guess so think about how you're going to use the bike all right, everybody, that's all I've got for you today on the ZM bike from GeForce. And if I didn't answer your question, drop it in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer it if I can. Thank you to GeForce for sending me this bike so I can in turn put some information out to all of you. That's uh, kind of my, the whole point of my channel, right, is to show you my real life user experience with e-bikes and give you what I think is the important things to know about it and maybe, just maybe, help you in your buying decisions so you get the right match for you. So I will link GeForce's website below so you can check out their bikes. I will put a link directly to this bike below so you can find it easily. It's just a link. You know, I don't get anything if you buy one. I'm here just to give you information about bikes, maybe help you out. And if you like information like this, do me a favor, consider hitting subscribe and ringing the bell so you know when I put out more e-bike content. And I think that is all for today. So appreciate everyone for watching.